Kotoka Torahime is on a mental break for health. Afkai has invited Matara Khan and not Pomu. And Nidhi Sanji's prices keep falling and people keep throwing memes on them. We want them to get to the 2234, etc. for the Nidhi Sanji memes. That and so much more on this episode. A little bit of new information when it comes to Kotoka. Well, not new. This is old, actually. This is actually pretty old. But everybody's worried right now. Everybody's worried that it might be another situation where Kotoka is uh, becoming the victim of Nidhi Sanji and the stealth suspensions, the stealth things out there. Uh, this was around the time, around the same time that I believe Mel was let go. I think this was around the time that Mel from Hololive was let go. Yozura Mel. Uh, and she mentioned this specifically here. She mentioned this specifically here. She says, apologies for the silence. I saw a doctor recently, and what they diagnosed me with really proved to me that I need time to be mentally heal. It still uploads songs, since those are what keeps my mind off of things, but streams will only happen when I'm well. Now, this is something that I think flew over a lot of people's heads. I think I had forgotten about this tweet happening, but you know, since I've been checking Kotoka's stuff recently, I do think that um, it is a nice way to let everyone know that she's at least taking care of herself. But again, you have to remember, it's hard to tell if all these things were actually written by her, which you would assume so because of the, the actual more personal writing to it, that all of these things are written by her and for her fans. And um, the issues that she's been having with the male thing, with uh, other people, uh, you know, having the situation where all these things are happening and it's really tough for her. And she says, guys, does this look right? I'm suspecting a skinwalker. Can someone inspect the apostrophes? Rest the Kotoko-chan. And she hasn't been there since now, since then. And that is something that has a lot of people worried. Of course, a lot of people are worried about it. A lot of people are frustrated that she's not back. And they're thinking it's a stealth suspension. We don't know. This is just conjecture at this point. But at the very least, hopefully she's still taking care of her mental health. As you saw before um, in my previous video, there are situations that uh, can be really tough for people. For everyone who didn't know, Afkai is the organization, is the group, is the expo that once had uh, Niji Sanji folks. It was going to be, I believe, Obsidia or one of them. And um, they had to cancel that part. They had to remove them because of the backlash. Supposedly, it had already been working about two weeks before. So it wasn't necessarily because of the backlash. It was just bad timing. It People thought it was because of the backlash that happened because of the fact that they had them. But no, according to that, it had been two weeks before they already made the decision. They were just <laughs> they were just waiting, if you excuse me, if they were just waiting for uh, the time to be right for Nidhi Sanji to say that they could do it. Because they had to go through, you know, all these things, negotiations with Nidhi Sanji, trying to keep the door open and make sure that Nidhi Sanji didn't hate them to uh, make sure that they can cancel them. Now, with the cancellation comes in this recently, which has just been placed recently, like as in like today, April 2nd, splash into summer with Matara Khan and Mint Phantoms, summer special of Off Kai Gen 3. Tune in for an hour long panel, including Q&A session and with the audience, of course, don't forget your sunblock and your sense of humor. So this was something that was organized by Vishojo, of course, because Matara Khan was a part of it. And she, you know, asked that Vishojo help with the organization as well with uh, with Minty Phantoms because, you know, they're having a podcast together. They, they want to be doing the, the tour, of the, you know, going around the different expos and different conventions together. And of course, Vishojo not being the horrible organization that Niji Sanji was and, you know, was like, all right, we'll we'll help with that. And, you know, as long as you split the things between both of you, they're like, yeah, whatever, we'll do that. So, yeah, they, they helped with that. It helps with their PR, if anything else. And it just brings their recognition a lot higher than it would be normally, which is an amazing thing to have. And, of course, it says, as guests and panelists with a one-hour-long panel podcast and a Q&A session afterwards. Has some extra panel slots after Niji Sanji was uninvited. One-hour-long panel. Mint is getting back in the game in a big way. Looking forward to seeing this, even if I won't be in there in person. Big busts and minty dusts. Classic, but with one word, soft. <laughs> ah, yes. Well... Matara has a lot of, of personality. Let's just say that much. Of course, as we know, Mint left her previous workplace. It's not hard to figure out who it is because Mint loves Metal Gear Solid. And so does the person who left the last workplace. So we have those things. And then here we have um, right now Aww, her mentioning it. Nice to meet you. Um, when it comes to you, <laughs> uh, I think for you, one of the biggest things that's very i don't know if it's that surprising about you but it's always surprising to me because we are very close and we talk so deeply i'm always mm. very surprised at how shy you can be and i'm <laughs> always very surprised at how much you kind of keep your emotions within even with me so and and the example that i have in mind is a while ago there was a 
when you were leaving your old uh. place of work, uh, we were on a call together and like you, you were fine. I remember I called you after and, and everything like that. And I, I feel like I cried in front of you more than you <laughs> did. And that's, I cried for when I was leaving. I cried for when you were leaving and you did eventually also, you know, process your pain, but you, you don't really ever show your pain, um, in, in, you know, it even to sense. friends, like you're, you're a lot mm. more guarded. I feel with that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and that's always been very surprising, I think, mm. uh, about you. How else has my impression of you changed? I just, now that I kind of know a little bit more about how you function and how you work, I think you're even more impressive with your creativity, with your drive, with the things that kind of excite you and engage you and your goals, aspirations. Yeah, and that's that's the, the part that I wanted to get to. Um, you know, the, the issue is when, of course, they leave, they're going to feel sad. They're always going to feel sad. It's going to be a, a an extreme moment for them, an extreme moment of uh, longing for what they what could have been, sadness for what could have been. Uh, just, you know, having those moments happen to them, um, just having all of that stuff happen, you know, it's, it's really hard when you're, when you're in a job like that, you're in a career like that. Oh God. I was saying just, uh, the things that you feel sometimes when you are in those type of organizations, those type of places that, um, you know, it was, it can be tough. It can absolutely be tough. It can absolutely be very tough to leave, uh, when you have things creatively that you wanted to get done and weren't done, you know? So I'm glad that she's where she is. It sucks that she had to leave where she did, but she's doing very much better now. Mint and Matara, of course, did their recent podcast, which was done yesterday on Monday. And someone decided to go through and make a little bit of a special small edit. Let's take a look and see how it goes. Oh, it's time. I am nervous. Hi, everybody. I am Matara Khan of the Shoujo, and this is my new podcast. Yippee! Yippee! Yay, you! <laughs> and uh, you must be wondering who the hell is that right there making all those noises? Why won't you come up and say the line? <laughs> say the line. Say the line. Say, the, say it. Say the line. Don't say the thing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> Yes, kept you waiting, huh? Exactly. That's the big one. <laughs> you know those, those videos that they always edit where it's like a bunch of people at the bar watching a big TV? I got you, homie. I got you, homie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's like, they'll put like the smash announcement or something. Yeah, like. yeah. Everyone just cheers and yells. <laughs> <laughs> Someone did that. Of course, props to the person who did it. It's on YouTube. You can take a look at it. Uh, props to them. I'm just, of course, taking a look at this because it's hilarious. I'm glad that people make these things because it makes it easier for someone like me to take a look at it and uh, get the good parts and then show it to you guys. And of course, give credit to whoever it's due because I believe this was on the Shoujo's. I just want to see the original person who put it there and if they have any kind of... Yep, it's Ahegao Priest. Change log version 1.3. Fixed audio mixing to be consistent throughout the video where it needs to be. Apologies for my inconvenience caused. Cheers. So this person, Ahagao Priest, which is an interesting name to say the least. But yeah, we have them there. And uh, thank you to them for showing us a little bit of uh, her saying the actual line. She said it, boys. She said it. Verse is another Japanese talent company, talent agency for VTubers. It is a VTubing company. And... Nothing huge is happening from what I can gather, but they are switching their verse talents, Kagase Uno, Alba Sera, Hitoshi Itsuki, and Kashi Otoha, as well as Nano, Nana Mona Maru. They're transferring them from verse to V. My guess is this is just a, a uh, transfer when it comes to management, better managed in the V company, probably because V knows more what they're doing about that whole stuff. So that is a possibility on that end. Well, that's assuming that Sony Music Virtual didn't abandon them as they finally added to V. So yeah, hopefully Sony Music Virtual hasn't abandoned them. Um, it says, I'm reading the statement using Google Translate in DeepL, and it seems like nothing will happen to the verse girls except now that they're under V brand and management. The X Verse Girls are now also added to the V website. All existing projects, uh, Verse projects, will still be continuing. Kagase Uno's crowdfunding project, Abasera and Kash Kashi Otoha's album merch, and Kagase Uno's birthday merch. It's just that they're going to be uh, eventually switched over. Also, the membership of Kagase Uno, N Nanomona Maru, and Hot Hitoshiro Uitsuki will be temporarily suspended to prepare for the transfer. Sony must have done a pretty big restructure of their VTuber business. Prism got shuttered and now Verse is merging with V. Yeah, there's there's some, some restructuring going on. My guess is because of the whole 
uh, VTuber thing isn't going quite as well as some organizations expected. So they have to kind of downsize it. They have to kind of uh, lean it up a bit. And hopefully, hopefully it still means that they get good support and they get treated well and not because, you know, some other nasty stuff. Not that surprising considering that the only reason to dissolve Prism was to save money on administrative and supportive costs. Since Verse and V are both Japanese, they'll share the same managers now. Overall, I expect the total restructure to have eliminated 10 or 12 or so permanent jobs. You hold my hand, As I was saying before, overall, I expect the restructure to have eliminated 10 or 12 permanent jobs, talent support aside, which will save around 100 million yen in labor costs yearly. So that's about a million dollars, a little bit less than a million dollars in labor costs annually, which they can then pump into the business itself or, you know, just save overall and have it kind of like in a rainy day fund or something like that which is possible with all these businesses. These businesses do tend to have moments where they want to do the rainy day fund, moments where they want to do other things like that. So I don't blame them at all for going this path. It just kind of sucks if you were expecting them to be in verse and now they're in V. Another reminder to hopefully get Sayu to 100K. Uh, it says, help her get to 100K subs on YouTube. I'm not saying she's perfect or that you will immediately like her, but give her streams a chance. I know she's doing fine CCV wise, but she needs to be shown more love than usual and it has Sayo synchronicity for the 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 m channel and uh, of course we have this uh particular i believe it's like a manga piece we're gonna take a look at right now it says from from uh Sayu sin uh from Sayu synchronicity so many people whose voice i recognize and remember so many who i wished i could be friends with and still wish to be every day i feel sad that seeing my name may make them feel uncomfortable so i thank you to those who try to meet the real me and again her looking at other people who are happy her looking at other people who are enjoying themselves and uh friends you know people that she used to collab with those type of people having those moments and then you know not being able to meet with them not being able to chat with them uh i hope she does continue to have the wonderful experience that she has had so far and she continues to be the wonderful sayu that we all know and care about of course so I found the actual images on her actual uh, Twitter account. And here you have Sia Synchronicity walking down, seeing people, my guess is her friends, people she knew, being happy, getting sad, having that sad moment, continuing, you know, they were friends that she had, friends that she was laughing with, friends that she was able to have a good time with, and she, you know, is walking away. Of course, since she is an android and, and uh, cyborg, etc., uh, she gets that little pop-up on messages, uh, you know, people be still being happy that they get to talk to her there are people out there who are still happy that she is uh, able to chat and able to have that time so she now she has her happiness she has people from phase connect that she can enjoy having uh the collabs with she has people from other agencies that would love to collab with her she has people in the indie vtuber scene that would love to collab with her and send her people whenever they can and that is um of course something else that um I love to do. I like sending her uh, raids whenever I can. Of course, occasionally you send raids to other people and send good things to other people, but I try to send raids when I can. Just giving you guys a bit of a heads up. This is speculation, of course, because we do not know. We are not in the head of the actual liver doing this. We are not in uh, the head of the person going through this stuff right now. But Ami Yoshiko, which was, which is a current Nidisanji liver. I mean, it's a past life of a current Nidisanji liver. And of course, uh, they privated it. They had it all privated, same way that Mint did mint phantom did uh until yesterday it looks like um and of course this is marked there as the person that it is all kinds of activity here and there and everywhere recently well not a lot but some things like aya and stuff holy s you weren't joking let's go not that mean not that either means anything but it might as well add repeat for those who hadn't noticed aya made three test posts in her pl youtube community tab changed her profile picture then deleted the post and all her links to her PL social media. Seems like her PL Twitter is also fully gone, not privated anymore. So it may be they're seeing if it's still active and then just deleting it when they can. Um, It could very well be. I mean, but again, like I said, that's all just hearsay for now. That's all just people assuming one way or the other. Uh, It could be anything really right now. It says she's previously hinted that this gig with Niji is her last shot at being a content creator before she gives up. Got a bad feeling that this is the start of a full bow out. So she might be fully bowing out of Niji Sanji, which hopefully she isn't. But there is that possibility. Considering her previous content, lots of hand making stuff. I'm saddened that she can't even lean into that more. Or maybe she doesn't want to. Or wanted to get away from it all. She may want to get away from it all. It could be. But as we know, Nidhi Sanji does not allow you to do that so easily and so quickly. Um, it makes it hard for any of that kind of stuff to happen, of course. Which one is Aya? She's still on the Black Company, right? 
Yeah, Aya Amare is still in the Black Company. Yeah. So here's the thing that's happening. Uh, they aren't prohibited from doing other content creation stuff outside of Niji EN. Could they be trying to get terminated? Or is Niji Sanji just fully realizing how kind of stupid the rule is? Um, from some people that are saying it does have exclusivity clause that forbids talents from you having any side gigs in other content creation. And we, we remember we remember that from the uh from the contract. If you remember, the contract did say that. It did say that that there is like I think a six month or whatever for content creation. You can't be uh, you know, with anyone else and also with Sayu, C-Y-Y-U, uh, they also mentioned that. They also mentioned things like um, not allowing uh, him to be any form of VA, voice acting, in any way, shape, or form. So they really restrict that. It could be they're trying to get themselves terminated. It could just be that they were seeing if that they still had the password to that and seeing if it still worked. Because remember, I, at one point in time, I think Twitter was going to get rid of old accounts. I think it was going to try to try to get rid of them fully. So... That is a thing. That is a possibility. You know, as I mentioned in my other video, we have Niji Sandy that went to 2434 on yesterday. I believe today they closed at 2427. So we weren't able to get to 2434 again, but we were able to get it down. Uh, anybody who was selling and stuff, we were able to get it down. And it says, for those who think Niji Sandy is 2434, 2232. And 2234 can also be read as Niji Sanji. Let's go to the 2200 level tomorrow, boys. Get to the abyss. And yeah, it's 2427. So we need to get to 2232 or 2234 in order for it to be read as Niji Sanji again. It's going to be fun. Play the Niji Sanji games. Niji Sanji play games. They get our prizes, the prizes that we want to give them. There's going to be Niji Sanji stuff, of course. What's the worst case scenario if the number dips too low? What happens? I have a somewhat nimble knowledge of financial stuff, but like this, and for my basic understanding, stock prices taking a nosedive means public shareholders are dumping their stock, which of course is exactly what it means. If it continues to fall without going back up on a long time scale, it means nobody is willing to buy it. The market feels that the product is not worth it. Investors will not feel AC is worth investing in. Any color would be delisted from the public trading and all future investments to the company would have to be from their own pocket or private partnerships. So it have to be like venture capitalists and things like that. If it ever comes down to this, I feel that Tazumi would sell and bail and then start up a new BS somewhere else. So yeah, there could be a sell, sell, sell. If it gets too low, they could get delisted because, of course, they might try to do more buybacks, which, of course, would make uh, confidence in them drop even more. This is all, of course, speculation, all from someone who isn't very is not very experienced like myself. I'm not very experienced in financial matters, but I have invested in the past. So I do know some stuff, but not like I'm not a pro at any of this stuff by any stretch of the imagination. Niji Sanji is still seamlessly selling the merch of ID members, even those already graduated, while abandoning the branch and letting them rot and die slowly. So they're getting rid of merch. They're getting rid of actual uh, ID merch, it looks like, uh, from what this person is putting out on YouTube. It looks like they have like an actual place that sells their stuff and they are actually going through it and trying to, you know, get rid of all that they can, which is a short right here. And this is all the Niji Sanji ID um, merch. It's like they're acrylic stands. Yeah, they're the acrylic stands. People who are gone. But yeah, pe people that are gone, people that are no longer there. But I think this may not be such a uh, outright thing from Niji Sanji. If that is a store that sells Niji Sanji merch, but isn't actually owned by Niji Sanji, then that's where we have uh, a difference of opinion because if it's a, if it's just one that buys stuff from Nidhi Sanji and then resells it maybe at a higher price because you know people in that area love Nidhi Sanji ID etc it can very easily just be that that store is trying to get rid of their merch the merch isn't moving so they're keeping it on the shelves uh, if it is a Nidhi Sanji owned merch store then yeah they're they're it's shameless it can be more shameless but it can very well just be a store owner trying to get rid of any merch that they currently have. Going to play devil's advocate and say because this is a physical store that they left over stock, they can't cancel them. Heck, I think even Hololive Honeyworks album still has Mel in it, if they remember correctly. My biggest gripe is not with them selling the merch, to be honest. It's with them that the while abandoning the branch. Uh, they basically ignore the branch that exists, no, pr no promotions, etc., unless it's time to make money off of them. That's what I'm pissed at. Yeah, but this thing could be, yeah, I mean, if they're still making merch now, of ID, they technically can because it is their IP, but it is a scummy way of doing things. Obviously, it's a very scummy way of doing things. It's a way that shouldn't happen. It's a way that uh, people will not be happy about. Hollow Life should probably release some plushies featuring graduated members in the next wave of Friends With You. I mean, 
Hololive would definitely make a lot of money. And I mean, if Nidhi Sanji is the one that's actually doing this, then Nidhi Sanji is doing it because of that, because they can still make money. There are people still who miss their Oshis. There are people who still will, will want something from their past Oshi. You know what I mean? They're going to want something there. And a company is a corporation is a corporation. They're going to want to make money in any way they can. This here was taken from a false ID, who is another person who is a, a VTuber who does news and such. Uh, they took it from the stream where he showed that Luka Kaneshiro is still using the old Luka uh, signature. And the what people are saying is the drawing that they have there of him, the little uh, fancy little drawing there, is not him because he doesn't know how to draw. And the typing, the, the type font and everything like that could possibly be him because, um, you know, it changed from when Raziel Wormonic was the one who was doing it for him. And it's better that it changed, but unfortunate that he's still reusing assets these years later after everything was done after everything was said and done. How matter the Nidhi sisters now and knowing all Luca's merch they bought has handwriting by his mod Raziel who's pretty hot IRL. Considering things there will be a core base of fans that will support him no matter what even if everything outlined is true. There will also be a lot who will be pretty mad and that's the the where like I come in to at least let people know that these things happen and let them know that uh you know it may not be the the best uh way of doing things like supporting your people because like i mean it was a mod who did it for him and i can understand that because uh when you can't draw like i can't draw so when i had my reference done uh you know it was a reference done uh, by someone else uh and i did my vtuber avatar but the ears were done by someone else you know that type of thing you use other people's talents and you pay them appropriately the issue was that i believe luca didn't really pay Raziel appropriately and did not credit them for the work that they did. So that ends up rubbing people the wrong way a lot of time. So even though this was a apparently an April Fool's joke, this is apparently something that they were cooking up. Bekora is the type of person that would do these types of jokes. Bekora is the type of person who would do an April Fool's joke of this sort. And she is the type of, uh, she's a, like a war criminal, quote unquote war criminal in her in her sphere where she would uh, put Beko Mama up to this. But here's the issue that we have here. Yes, Beko Mama put up to this, but she also got 170k viewers while she was doing this. She got a ton of viewership while she was doing this. So this is something that um, I honestly think is going to be uh, something that they may be doing more of. I think this is something that, you know, they're seeing that uh, this is an interesting thing that people like and they are going to be doing more of this going forward. At least that's what I think. Yeah, you have Minty Phantom, who's here, and you have uh, Homo Rainpuff, who you'll recognize the voice from over here, was a was and still is a humongous Metal Gear fan. If all of you remember who Psycho Mantis was, it was an interesting character that existed in a Metal Gear Solid game that would be able to read your inputs and be able to uh, read your, because uh, I think I believe it was in PlayStation 2. So it was able to read your, uh, wow. your save games and was able to read what was inside of your memory card that you had for PlayStation 2. And of course, Minty being someone who absolutely enjoys uh, all the stuff that's going on with uh, Metal Gear Solid, decided to make this little thing here. You don't like ghosts? No, no one likes ghosts. My power? You doubt my power? Let me show you why I am the most powerful practitioner of the culture and arts in the world. Give me more power! There's no need for words. I am Psycho Mintus. This is no trick. It's true power. I can read your every thought. Now let me read your mind. No, perhaps I should say your browsing history. Oh no, not the browsing history. Remember we talked about this before? Browsing person. history is very dangerous to read. Looking for something it's so like, dangerous to read. Uh, like that, without incognito mode on. Absolutely. But even if you had it on, I'd still be able to view your every search. <laughs> still don't believe me? Now I'll read more deeply into your soul. Of course. Ah, I can see into your mind. Of course, why? So, you like VTubers, don't you? Of course. <laughs> Wouldn't be here if I didn't. So you like, oh, oh, uh, uh what, what else, what, what else do we have? Uh, so you like, oh, oof, uh, um, is, is that even, uh, is that even allowed on YouTube? Like, I don't think I can say that. Uh, well, well, uh, well, well, you still don't believe me. Take your hand off the mouse. Leave it there without touching it. Yes, yes, that's good. Now watch as you subscribe to Minta Matara's summer special of YouTube course we channel. Do. Everyone does. On your own. <laughs> what do you think now? The demonstration is over.
yep, demonstration was over, and everybody has already done it because that is exactly what's going to happen. Of course, people are going to be going to be doing that because, of course, that's what they want to do. And yes, of course, subscribe to Mint and subscribe to others because that is the American thing to do. I think post on Kuro Sanji, one of the biggest gossip sites in Japan, reports on Luka Kaneshiro's issue. Uh, this is a large blog. It's a gossip site. So, you know, it isn't really marketing, like saying that the P2Y stuff, the P2Y.jp is a bigger news than this itself because of the fact that P2Y is a large organization. This one is more of a gossip site, but the fact that the gossip got to them means that the Japanese audience does like gossip just like everyone else. So you know that some of these gossip columns are going to be able to be seen by the people who would normally be looking at such things. They normally would be looking for such things and trying to uh, entertain themselves with the things that are happening out there. And uh, we're see looking at the actual post that they put up here. It looks like a, a, a actually a prominent place with the Luka Kaneshiro stuff below it. The debuts, his actual original debut. Uh, they're putting the experience with Luka Kaneshiro down here from the P2Y.jp, uh, the document published by Raziel. And then they have, of course, a VTuber that is speaking about it in Japan. I've covered all of these things. And here we have, sorry, there was a large motorcycle. Here we have uh, the, the stuff about, you know, uh, Luka Kaneshiro, Java stuff, everything mentioned here in Japanese, of course. Um, it is interesting to see all of this stuff happen it is nice that in japan at least they are going to be out there they're going to be mentioning stuff they're going to be not letting this just close off because of the fact that it is uh you know in japan it is an en thing and it is a japanese company sometimes they try to keep that under wraps to try to keep that closed so we'll see and once again uh this is all you know just the stuff that happened thank you so much for watching comment down below please i love having these conversations with you guys i love seeing your opinions on all of this of course, also uh, take a look at all my social media, my Discord, my Twitter, all of that places, Twitch, in case if that's one of your preferences or YouTube, whichever one you want. And take a look at the screen at what I have for you here. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.